So the next talk is dynamic minimum spin forest with subpolynomial worst case update time by Anupam Malan Kai, Adapon Saranarak, Christian Wolf Wilson. Thank you. Yes. So this talk is about dynamic spanning forest. And um, so just to remind everyone, uh, minimum spanning forest, what it is. So minimum spanning tree is just a weight, minimum weight tree that includes all the nodes. And minimum spanning forest is a set of minimum spanning tree on each connected component. Like for each connected component, you get a minimum tree. And for minimum, uh, just spanning forest, uh, this is just the same, but you forget the, about the weight, any tree. And the goal of this talk is to show you uh, an algorithm for maintaining a minimum spanning forest under changes. And just to make everything uh, easier, for simplicity, uh, we forget about the weight. Uh, so we are in this situation where uh, you are given a spanning forest, and then there is some update given to you. Uh, here you get some deletion, delete is 1, 3, so you delete, and now the tree is not spanning, so you need to update. And then the algorithm should output the change of your tree, so you output this thing. And then the, there is a sequence of updates, so the next update comes, and you update the graph, there's no change here, so you don't output anything. Next update comes, you update, change the tree, and output the change. Okay. So this is uh, the setting. So basically, we want a data structure that maintain a graph G and its spanning forest F. And for each time, um, you can delete or insert an edge. And you want to output the list of edges changed in the tree or forest. And the goal is to minimize the update time, which is the worst case time uh, to output the change after each update. And there is a there is a long history on this problem. I will briefly tell you what it is, and uh, usually I hide block factors here. So the easiest way to, to, to solve this problem is just to compute a spanning tree at every time, and it takes n time. But uh, then uh, Federico Sun from the 80s uh, gave us the first non-trivial algorithm with uh, square root n time, and then uh, this. And after that, for 10 years, uh, F star at all improved this to root n. And around the same time, there is one breakthrough by Hensinger and King. Um, they managed to get polylog update time. But the catch is that this update time is amortized. That is, this is just the average update time. That is, for some time, after a while, it might take a really long time, like linear time. But uh, on average, this is small. So this actually uh, start the quest of the optimal amortized algorithm. And people have been working on it ever since until like uh, this year. So that as well. And this is really tight and, uh, and uh, it's really cool result, many of them. And, uh, but if you talk about amort uh, worst case at that time, not amortized, then uh, there is a cool result by, by uh, Capra, uh, King Mountjoy. They managed to get polylog update time. And, but there is another catch. That is, this assumes obliterate adversary. What do I mean by that? I mean that, uh, suppose you think you are a user, you want to use this data structure, you need to, you need to fix all the sequence of your update from the beginning and, and give this sequence to, to the data structure. That is, you cannot adapt your next update based on, the, based on the answer of the data structure given to you. But this is uh, one breakthrough uh, because it, is, it takes 20 years to improve this uh, worst case bar by F time. But because of this cache of reverse adversary that they assume, it means that um, you, cannot, you cannot use this as a subroutine in static algorithm. So the goal now shift to this, that is, we want both worst case update time 
and uh, uh, we don't want to assume oblivious ad adversary, so we want adaptive adversary. So just to compare here, uh, if you if you allow oblivious adversary, then you have polylock by here. For adaptive adversary, you get just root n here. Okay. So when you compare this, it actually brings us to a fun tree of, of algorithmic technique in dynamic graph algorithm. Because uh, this, there are many uh, facets algorithms in this field that assume oblivion adversary. The question is that is it possible to, to remove this assumption without serious slowdown? Uh, this is a general thing that happened. There are many important problems in this and many cool algorithms assume this oblivion adversary. When one, once you don't have this assumption, it becomes much slower. So, uh, spanning forest is just one of them. So, because of this uh, phenomenon happens, so people really try, try to remove this um, uh, assumption and uh, um, we can um, improve this a bit, and um, um, me and the Nupon and Chris, Christian Wolfnelson, uh, this talk, uh, we, we managed to get a first polynomial improvement over root n bound here, uh, without assuming oblivious adversary. And in this talk, basically, once we these two work are independent, and once we know that uh, we are working on the same thing, we combine force, and basically we bring this down to n to the little of 1. So, this basically is um, kind of... So, here for spanning tree, from root n, we get uh, n to the little of 1. This is kind of the first step toward removing um, Oblivious adversary assumption. So this is our result. And now, um, for the technical overview, I will give you first a high-level idea. And uh, the approach is basically uh, to use the same framework that we both uh, have before in our stock paper. And then we identify what should be improved, and we improve two main components and make everything work. What is that framework? The framework is that you just try to look at the problem and try to solve the problem in two extreme cases. <coughs> um, one case is when the graph is expander. I will define it later, but um, basically expander means the graph is well connected. And another case is when the graph is almost tree, which basically means uh, it is basically a tree with few edges. Like here, yeah, this is the uh, the green edge is a tree plus four edges. So once you have solved the problem in two cases, then there is a you try to combine it and uh, makes everything work. And uh, to do this, we use many kinds of technique, uh, both uh, which is some is classic in the field of data structure, and some is quite modern. But the, the new thing in this paper is to improve this part, the algorithm here, and the pruning part here. I will explain uh, what, what it is exactly. So now, uh, before going uh, further, let me tell you uh, what is expander and almost three in more details. Um, so here I say that the graph is expander. This is kind of relaxed. Relax um, definition. The graph is expanded. If you if you look at any cut, and um, the number of edges crossing the cut over the size of the cut on the small side is large, not constant but quite large. So think of uh, epsilon is as some some very small constant. For almost three, this is we said that the, the connected graph is almost three if the number of edges is at most this, uh, n minus 1, which is number of edge in the tree, and something sublinear. Okay. 
So if you have heard about alpha specifier, it is, it is one kind. Uh, it is one specific uh, uh, instance of almost three. And uh, now, um, come back to this high level. We first uh, solve uh, the problem in, on expander, but um, I don't have too much time to, to say on this because uh, um, this is actually uh, done in the previous world. And when when you solve the problem without weight, just spanning for rest is really straightforward, and it is used in our result or result. And uh, for for when you want to solve minimum spanning for rest, it is also solved in a uh, Christian world. But now the, the new thing, uh, the algorithm in almost three. So this this part. So in the previous work, both of our algorithm, uh, we used a totally different technique, and it takes just slightly uh, less than square root n. In this work, we use the technique which is called contraction technique. Uh, this we actually try to discover. I mean, we try to to do something, and we actually discover that uh, the technique is is there, and we, we can just use it. And this technique is actually used before for for many papers in the field, but uh, uh, it is used as a reduction for to to deletion only problem. That is, uh, you have you have a, your problem that you you have may need to insert or delete at edges, and you reduce it to the case when you have only deletion. So this this is the technique for that, but. Um, the, the, the idea here is that uh, we just identify that this old technique can, can, have, can be used in a di totally different way. So this technique can be used as a reduction when you solve the problem on almost three and reduce it to the same problem on a super small graph. So just totally uh, new purpose. So, uh, just tell you briefly how it works. So suppose you have almost three that look like this. So you have the green, the green edge is the three, and there's, there are some um, some non-three red edges. And um, and then uh, they, they, you can define some kind of graph that is basically a but the path that connect the red dots. Yeah. And. Um, and it, it kind of looked like this. And uh, once you, you once you contract each part here to become an edge, then uh, you can prove that uh, this graph that connect the that basically try to connect the red dots, which is uh, endpoint of non tree edges. This graph will have just the number of edges in this graph will be proportional to the number of red dots. And so there are not too many edges. And once you realize this, you just use the, the old reduction, which says that if you can maintain a spanning forest in log n subgraph of this contracted graph G prime, then you can recover the spanning forest in this old, in this original graph. And once we have that, uh, we just we can just conclude that okay, we can maintain. Uh, spanning forest in the almost three in time log n uh, times the number of the, the time that you need on the small graph. Okay. So and by induction we assume that we have fast algorithm on the small graph and so this gives uh, a really fast algorithm on almost three. And now uh, let's see how, how we combine the two two cases here. To, to, to get an algorithm for any graph. So there are two main tools. The first one is decomposition. So this is one of the main thing in our old paper, both of ours. Um, but this might be interesting to you because this, this is just totally static problem, just, just classic setting. You have a graph. What you do is you output a partition of nodes such that for each uh, induced subgraph, vi, 
you have expanded the the conduct the expansion of conductance is like quite large, and at the same time there are not too many edges crossing each part. The red one uh, there are not too many. So this is this is crucial, um, and and we showed before that, that we can do it really fast. Here. And um, once we have that, it is quite uh, clear what should we do, because we have an algorithm on expander. So we just maintain a spanning tree inside each expander. So we, we just get it here. Um, we have the tree inside each expander. Using our uh, the technique that we have. And now once we once we finish everything inside expander, you just forget about edges inside it. And what you have now, you have almost three. Why? Because um, beside the green edges here, there are a red edge. But the red edges, there are not too many, just a sublinear number of them. So this is almost three, and you just maintain a spanning tree inside this almost three, using the technique that, that I just told you. And now we get this tree. This is just a spanning tree of the graph. Mm -hmm. So, but um, Actually, this is, that doesn't work yet. Uh, why? Because um, if you look here, um, we have expander in the beginning, but after you delete some edges, then the expander is not expander anymore. Okay. So, but this brings us to, 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 to the, the next thing that we need, which is pruning. So let me tell you what what it does, and it will exactly fix this issue. So, so here, the setting is the following. Suppose you have expander in the beginning, and then uh, you delete one edge. And this algorithm will output a set P1, and then you delete another edge, P2, it output P2, and so on. Uh, and such that um, the, the important uh, um, property that we have is that um, the, the complement of PI on each graph will be expanded with some with worse uh, expansion. Okay. So basically, we, this algorithm is the dynamic algorithm that updates this pruning set P from P I minus 1 to the next P1 to the next p, pi, in sub polynomial time, and such that the complement of each graph of each p is expanded. So, uh, okay, previous work used some something similar here, but uh, it it ha it has uh, worse update time. So come back to this. When we have that the uh, expander is not expanded anymore after deletion, just use pruning. So we get some part that must be pruned out. And then uh, you get expander inside. The complement is expander. And now everything is the same. You, you just maintain a spanning tree inside its expander and forget the tree inside uh, the edges inside expander. And now this is uh, almost tree because uh, you can show also that the, um, the, the, set, the size of this set will be quite small because there are not too many deletions so far and the, the set P grows slowly as well. So because of this, you just maintain a spanning forest in this almost tree and you are done. That, that is the high level overview of how everything fit together. So to conclude, uh, Basically, we bring down the complexity of this um, uh, problem, which is quite central, of the dynamic graph uh, algorithm to n to the one, n to the little of one from something like root n. And there are the 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 high level idea is just to use something that we you have used before, the same framework but with its two improved part. One part is uh, 
to use contraction technique, the old technique with a new purpose. Another one is the dynamic pruning algorithm that maintain expander, kind of. And now I give you the open problem that I really like to work on. So one is um, just to make every, so, so this algorithm is uh, Las Vegas. It's always correct, but uh, it, you need to flip some coin anyway. But uh, can you make this deterministic uh, faster than root n time? So the first barrier is just, uh, can you, ch the first barrier that, that I think it might be interesting is that uh, we don't even know how, how to check um, if the graph is, is a good expander or bad expander in deterministic time, uh, in deterministically uh, in near linear time. So the next one, um, can you bring this down to polylog? Um, one of the first area is that um, can you make this decomposition that I mentioned uh, in how to preprocess the graph in the beginning? Um, if you can do this in m polylog time, um, that would be cool. And this is actually an open problem by uh, Orexia and Vishnoi. And if you can do this, this will actually simplify some static algorithm that is based on maintaining uh, decomposition, like uh, Maxflow and um, directed uh, Laplacian solver. So, thank you. Questions? Okay, well, let's thank the speaker again. Yeah.